Hi, this is Dane Quinn, and today's lecture will deal with motion, namely position, velocity, and acceleration. And this is for engineering mechanics, dynamics, and I'm at the University of Akron. So motion is described by position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So of those, position is essentially the location of some point in space with respect to a reference point, while displacement is the change in position over some finite time interval, right? So how does the position of some point vary over an interval of time? Then velocity is the derivative of position. So it's the rate of change of the position vector, right? So it's, it's essentially measuring how the position vector changes. Finally, acceleration is the derivative or the rate of change of velocity which amounts to the second derivative of the position vector. So one important thing is that the motion of a point is naturally described by vectors. And we have a separate video lecture on vectors and some of the operations that they follow and, and a little bit more about those. So I would encourage you to go back and review that. Right, but again, the motion of a point is described by a vector. Right, so let's start off with position. So here I have a point O and I have a second point P. I'm going to assume that this point O is fixed in the plane of the paper or the screen or, or essentially the ground. So O is not moving, but P could possibly move around. So we'll represent the vector, as we often do, by an arrow. And it's the arrow from O to P. And in our notation, we define that as R of P with respect to O. So when we think about position, this R of P with respect to O, what that really means is the position of P, and that's the point that we're interested in, with respect to O. And right, so that's kind of what we say. So again, it's the position of P with respect to O. O is the origin or the reference point, and P is the point that we are interested in. And so if we look at a position vector, it, it has a number of different elements. Right? So in particular, we have an origin. And this is a point of reference for our configuration. Then we also have a uh, magnitude. So that's the distance between O and P. Right, so it's the length of this arrow. And then finally, we have a direction. Right, so vectors have both magnitude and direction. So this is the relative orientation of P with respect to really some basis vectors. Here we identify the horizontal and vertical directions. And then the direction of this vector is measured relative to those basis directions. Right, so these are sort of the elements of, of really any position vector. So now the second quantity that we're interested in is displacement. And of course, we had defined displacement earlier as the change in position over some finite time interval. So here, I show a point P moving along some path at two instants in time. Right, so this is going to be the position of P at T1, and this will be the position of P at T2. And so we will identify this as R of P with respect to O at T1, and then R of P with respect to O at T2. So again, two instants in time. 
So now the displacement is defined as the difference between these two vectors. And it's going to be abbreviated as delta r of p over the time interval t1 to t2. And then, now this is going to be important, right? This represents the frame of reference that the change is evaluated with respect to. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second, down here in the lower half of the slide. All right. So for now, this is going to be r of p with respect to o at time t2 minus r of p with respect to o at t1. So here, if I look at this figure, the displacement essentially is the vector from the initial position to the final position. Right, so here, delta r of p, t1 to t2, is described by this orange vector. So again, we talked a little bit about this frame of reference. And it represents the background or essentially encompassed by these reference directions on which the change is evaluated. And that represents the frame of reference. Now, one really important thing here is that the origin must be fixed in the frame of reference. Right, so here, F. So now, a little bit more about that. Here, let's consider a point P, right, that moves from sort of this initial configuration to this configuration at time T2. So if I want to evaluate the change in P with respect to O, I'll draw the following vectors. Right, we'll draw a vector from O to P. And we'll say that this is the position of P with respect to O at time T1. Then we'll do the same thing for T2. We'll draw the position of P with respect to O. And we'll say this is the position of P with respect to O at T2. Right, so clearly, with respect to a frame of reference that's fixed in the ground, right, so we'll We'll, we'll define that frame of reference fixed in the ground as G, and G for ground. Then P moves around, right? Because P starts off over here, and then P starts off, and well, P ends up over here, right? So clearly the position of P changes, right? So in terms of G, the frame of reference fixed in the ground, and for dynamics, this is often taken to be inertial space. Then our directions i and j are fixed with respect to or in terms of that frame of reference. So now, I've also shown sort of these, I think about them as like pieces of paper. And on that, right, we have a point A, right? So point A moves around, and we could inscribe directions E1 and E2, right? So again, this is at time T1. This is at some later time T2. I could inscribe and define E1 and E2 fixed in that paper. We'll call this frame of reference B, 
And so this is B at T1. And this would be the frame of reference at T2. So now, in terms of this frame of reference, notice that P doesn't change. So if I were to identify this vector as R of P with respect to A, and here A is fixed in this frame of reference, and in this example P is also fixed in this frame of reference, then RPA doesn't change at all. So we have this second frame, B, that's moving with respect to the ground. And it just so happens in this example, the point P is fixed in this moving frame of reference. And here, E1 and E2 are fixed in B. Right, so if I look at this, with respect to G, the frame of reference fixed in the ground, P certainly moves, right, because it starts over here and it moves over there. However, if I were to evaluate the motion of P with respect to this frame of reference B, I would see that P is actually stationary. Right, so you can kind of imagine that you were a bug standing on the paper. Right, so here you are, a little bug. Right, and now the paper moves. Right, you don't move with it. Right, so what do you see? You don't see P moving at all. P is stationary from your point of view. While if you're an observer that's fixed in the ground, you certainly see P moving. So the consequence of this and kind of the takeaway is that the displacement, right, so the change in this vector, in, in some vector, depends on the frame of reference. And it does so through the choice of the origin. Remember we said the origin must be fixed in the frame of reference. Well, here O is fixed in the ground, and we evaluate some displacement. A is fixed in the frame of the paper, and we evaluate a different displacement, actually. Again, because the displacement depends on the frame of reference in which we evaluate it. So that sets us up for velocity and acceleration. So here the velocity is defined as the derivative of the position. So what does it mean to be a derivative? Well, let's go back and look at the definition of a derivative. It is defined in terms of the change in some quantity divided by a time interval. Right, so the velocity of p with respect to some frame of reference f is the limit as delta t goes to zero of the position. Right, so the position here is r of p with respect to o at t plus delta t. Right, and this is just the definition of a derivative from your calculus class. Right? It's the change in the quantity divided by the independent variable, the change in the independent variable. So here, again, it's the change in position divided by delta t. Well, remember what the change in position was. That was defined as the displacement. So really, we have delta R, P, T, T plus delta T. So again, the change in the position 
right, with respect to the frame of reference, divided by delta t. And this is the definition of the velocity. So here, this limit process we represent as a derivative. d dt of r of p with respect to o. And of course, because the frame of reference is important, we'll often add a superscript to the derivative to indicate what frame of reference we're taking the derivative with respect to. We had said on the previous slide that the displacement depends on the frame of reference because the origin O must be fixed in whatever this frame of reference is. So as a result, the derivative depends on the frame of reference. So it depends on the frame of reference that we are evaluating the displacement in terms of. Again, for the displacement, the origin must be fixed in O. Right? So when I look at the position vector, origin O must be fixed in the frame of reference that we're evaluating the derivative in terms of. So now just a little bit more about this. Uh, one common quantity that we are often interested in in terms of the velocity is the speed. So here the speed is defined as the magnitude of the velocity. So if the speed is v, we would say that v is defined as, again, the magnitude of the velocity of p. And speed is distinct from velocity because the speed has no component of direction. So if you think about driving in your car, if you're driving 60 miles an hour east, that is one velocity. If you're driving 60 miles an hour north, that's a different velocity, again, because the direction is different. However, the speed in both cases is the same. You're going 60 miles an hour. So again, speed is represented as the magnitude of velocity. So then when we turn to acceleration, we find and we define the acceleration of P. And again, it depends on the frame of reference as the derivative of the velocity. Or, since the velocity is the derivative of position, the acceleration is the second derivative of the position of P with respect to O. So again, the acceleration is the derivative of velocity. And once again, because the velocity depends on the frame of reference, the acceleration also depends on the frame of reference that we're evaluating the change in terms of. But in particular, the frame of reference for the derivative of velocity must match the frame of reference for the derivative of position right, that gave us the velocity. So the frame of reference for the derivatives must match. In order to be 
identified as an acceleration. Once again, the derivatives depend on the frame of reference in which they're taking. So just a little notation. If we don't identify the frame of reference in terms of the velocity and acceleration, so if I simply write the velocity of p or the acceleration of p without specifically denoting this frame of reference, then the frame of reference is assumed to be the ground. Right? Or some inertial space that sort of represented by the plane of the paper that we're working with. So again, it's assumed to be the ground. If you don't see it, again, assume it's inertial space. However, there will certainly be cases later on in the class where I'm interested in, say, the velocity or acceleration with respect to some other frame of reference. And when I encounter those cases, I will explicitly denote the frame of reference that I am interested in. So just a little bit more sort of graphically or geometrically, if I have the position of P with respect to O, right, so we can identify that as R of P with respect to O, and that point is moving along some path, right, and so let's say for whatever reason I am, am able to determine the path of the motion, then the velocity of that point is tangent to the path, right, so the velocity would be sort of in this direction. Right, so this would be V of P as a function of time, right, which again is the derivative of position. So the velocity is always tangent to the path. Then, if I look at the acceleration, the acceleration represents how the velocity changes, right? So, in this case, as we move along, right, the velocity might start to move in this direction as we go along the path. And so here, the change in the velocity, you know, might be in that direction, for example. And that, we would represent as the acceleration. So that it is the change in velocity. So again, the velocity is tangent to the path. So this is kind of a geometric description of position and velocity and then maybe acceleration for this motion. So finally, when I look at velocity and acceleration, one nice feature is that the origin doesn't matter. At least it doesn't matter and doesn't influence the velocity and acceleration. It would certainly influence the position vector, right, as we've seen here. So I have an origin O1 and I have an origin O2. And the important thing is that the origin is fixed in the ground, right, or fixed in the frame of reference that we're evaluating the derivative. Right, so here we'll just say, assume that we're, we're looking at the change in 
the position of P with respect to O, and O is fixed in the ground. So as long as the origin is fixed in the ground, it doesn't matter what origin we choose. Right, so here I have a vector R of P with respect to O1. Here I have a vector R of P with respect to O2. And then I have this vector, which actually is constant, which is O2 with respect to O1. So if I look at the position of P, I can measure it with respect to O1. I can measure it with respect to O2. And I can also determine the position of O2 with respect to O1. Again, if P moves around, this vector remains fixed. These two vectors might change. So looking at the velocity, remember the definition. It was the derivative of position. All right, so let's first start off and look at, say, the position of P with respect to O1. All right, so we're looking at the change in this blue vector. Well, using some simple vector addition, we see that the position of P with respect to O1 is the position of O2 with respect to O1 plus the position of P with respect to O2. Right, so this vector is the same as this vector plus that vector. So now, evaluating this derivative, well, we have the change in the position of O2 with respect to O1 plus now the change in uh, with well the change of p with respect to o2 oh well this is nice because the position of o2 with respect to o1 is fixed with respect to the ground so this vector or this derivative is zero and we're simply left with the change in the position of P with respect to O2. However, since O2 is fixed in the ground, we've already said that the change in this position vector is the velocity of P. So really, we've shown that the velocity of P is the same whether I choose the position of P with respect to O1 or I choose the position of P with respect to O2. And then I can also go and look at accelerations and show the same thing. Right, so I won't go through all the details, but if I look at the second derivative of position, the second derivative of P with respect to O1 is equal to the second derivative of P with respect to O2, which again is the acceleration of P. So the velocity and acceleration, as long as the origin is fixed in the ground, are independent of the specific choice of the origin. Right, so I have a lot of flexibility about how I choose to maybe measure the position of P. So really what we've done here is we've looked at position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Right? And in particular, we've shown that velocity is the derivative of position, and acceleration is the derivative of velocity. Right, so how do I go back and forth between these two? Well, if I want to move from position to velocity and velocity to acceleration, right, I simply take a derivative, right? Or I apply differentiation. Right, so that's d dt to move from here to there. So again, if I want to go from position to velocity to acceleration, right, I start taking derivatives. Derivative of position is velocity. The derivative of velocity is acceleration. However, if I want to go the other way, right, if I want to go from acceleration to velocity to position, well, then we do the inverse operation, which is integration. Right, so we integrate with respect to time. And that allows us to go the other direction. So we're able to go from acceleration to velocity by integrating. 
and velocity to position by integrating again. So here we've talked about motion in a very general way, right? We've shown that velocity, and we've defined velocity, and shown that it's the derivative of position, and we did that by means of the displacement. Then we talked a little bit about acceleration as the derivative of velocity. And we are able to go back and forth between the two. So if I know the position, I can find the acceleration by differentiating. If I know the acceleration, I can find the position, ultimately, by integrating. So we still haven't really talked about how to measure and describe position vectors and velocity and acceleration vectors. And that will come in following lectures. So thanks a lot for this. and. I will be back.